Do you wanna break through technique plateaus? Well, stay tuned. I'm gonna share with you my top three favorite drills to fix your bar path in the snatch. For even more content on weightlifting technique, meat prep, mental development, all of that and beyond, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Coach Julia here. I am the head coach at Spot Barbell in Manhattan and the newest coach here at Brooklyn Training Hall in East Williamsburg. And today we're gonna talk about the snatch. I'm gonna give you my top three drills to help improve your bar path. Okay, so before we get into these exercises, I wanna make sure we're on the same page about what an optimal and efficient bar path should look like. Now, if you've never looked at one before, it's gonna look a little bit like an S curve, right? Where there's this initial lift and movement towards the body off the start of the lift. So from the ground towards the hip, we're gonna see a slight and gradual movement backwards of the bar. How far back and how much is gonna depend on limb length and individual nuances of that athlete, but generally we're gonna see that backward slope of a line. Then you're gonna see a little bit of a pull outward away from the body as that athlete begins to transition under the bar. And then finally, you're gonna see this little kind of candy cane effect happening as they finish that turnover and big punch up to lock it out overhead. Okay, so it's gonna look a little bit like a backward S. Okay, so we're gonna start troubleshooting this bar path backwards by addressing the second half of the lift, which is the movement underneath the bar into the finish with something called a muscle squat snatch. Sometimes you'll hear this referred as a no foot, no contact snatch, it's all the same. So this lift is usually used as a primer. It's generally lighter. It's not something that athletes are gonna be able to push to maximal load because there's no connection to the body. There is no contact. What they're gonna get a feel for in this is that active push against the ground to create elevation and to generate some momentum on the bar that transitions immediately into the change of direction. Uh, I like this a lot because it forces athletes to keep the bar really, really close to them with their arms, which is, again, we're addressing that second half of the lift and finish really hard by punching up into the bar. There has to be this seamless connection between a push and a pull that's really specific to the snatch. So this is a great one to start with. Because we're eliminating that hip contact, we're decreasing the possibility for horizontal displacement that usually happens to some degree when we make connection to the bar, right? So you're really able to focus on a really vertical turn under and staying really connected to the bar as you move underneath it. My second favorite exercise builds on that muscle squat snatch, and this is a no foot snatch. So essentially the start position's the same as that muscle squat snatch, which is feet in the receiving position. We're not gonna move our feet. They're just gonna go up and down, but they don't actually jump. They don't move, they don't shuffle out to a different position. But now we're gonna introduce contact with the body, right? So the contact point is the same as in a conventional snatch. I like this because it's great for athletes who struggle staying flat footed, right? If you rush to that bar and you wanna bring your hip forward to it prematurely and you end up extending off of the balls of your feet too much, this is a great way to work on that because it forces you to stay flat footed as long as possible. I also really like this for athletes who maybe struggle with footwork uh, and placement in the snatch, meaning they're not quite sure what to do with their feet once they're airborne. Maybe they are in the air for too long. Maybe they're doing a big donkey kick because they don't have to think about foot movement and then it allows them to think about other pieces of the lift a little bit more since their feet are already gonna be where they need to be. So in general, most athletes can do no foot snatches with weights pretty comparable to their 1RM um, best snatch. So this is a really easy plug and play, right? Like just substitute this variation for a snatch where they would otherwise do classic snatches. And it allows for that focus on staying flat footed for longer. It allows for better bar path. Again, it's really similar to that muscle squat snatch in that they're really driving with the legs and following through with the arms all the way into the finish. But we're reintroducing connection to the bar. So they have an opportunity to work on that second phase of the lift, right? Right? Not the last one that we worked on before, but that second phase where the bar is gonna come away from the body as they initiate that transition so they can learn to keep that curve a little bit tighter. Check me out on Instagram for some examples of athletes in action with these movements. So my third and actually probably my favorite snatch variation to address bar path focuses on the first part of the lift, which is the movement of the bar from the ground to the hip or really just off the ground in general, and that is the deficit snatch. 
So a deficit snatch just means you're standing on a riser, an inch, an inch and a half off the ground is totally fine. And it creates an exaggerated need to pull the knees out of the way, right? So because your knees are gonna be further forward than they normally are because of this kind of artificial longer leg that we've created, it really forces the athlete to consciously think about getting those knees out of the way enough to be able to pull the bar in towards them. Again, that's always our goal is bring the bar to you rather than you going to the bar. Uh, I tend to spend a lot of time focusing on bar movement off the ground because once that barbell is in motion, if it's going in the wrong direction and it shifts your balance off of where it needs to be, it's really, really hard to correct and bring it back, right? So it's important that we learn how to start the lift correctly. It helps minimize any potential errors that are gonna happen later down the road because of it. So you can achieve a similar result with things like a lift off, which is just a partial pull to the knee, back down into a snatch, or you can do a pause at the knee, right? Start the lift, pause somewhere around the knee, wherever that athlete tends to not be in the right position, adjust it, and then continue the lift. I like the deficit because it, it forces you to solve the problem without you needing to think about it too much, right? It just puts you in the position where you gotta fix it and not involve your brain so much. Yeah, that's it, super quick. Super helpful, hopefully those are my top three favorite drills to address your bar path in the snatch. So I want you to think about what part of the lift do you struggle with most, right? There's usually a hierarchy and really spend some time trying out one of these exercises. If you struggle with staying active in turning the bar over, then we wanna do that muscle squat snatch. If you have a hard time connecting to the bar and you get to the balls of your feet a little bit early or maybe you start to throw your shoulders behind it early, then maybe we're gonna do a no foot snatch. That's really gonna help. If you struggle off the ground, every time you start the lift, the bar starts to go forward and away from you, then I encourage you to try some deficit snatches. If you wanna learn a little bit more about programming, check out one of the links down below. It's gonna tell you about some of my remote programs for both novice and intermediate lifters. So whether you're a beginner and you're just starting out learning the Olympic lifts, we wanna make sure that you're learning correctly. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can jump into my team program that I offer for my lifters. And also, I don't know if you saw, but I recently came out with an ebook all about mental development for weightlifters, how to get your mind right to make big lifts. That is called No Pressure, No Diamonds, and you can get your copy in the link down below. That's it. Thanks for joining me down here in Brooklyn. If you have questions about some of the lifts that we talked about, then go ahead and leave me a comment down below, and I'm happy to answer them. See you on the platform.